Hey folks, doing another one of these application information videos. Thanks to our good friends at Go Hunt. They want us to teach all of you the basics because in a video we can only touch on so many things, but we're going to touch on the important stuff. And if you want the full detail, the strategy articles, the draw odds, the maps, the everything else, go to Go Hunt, sign up for their insider, use promo code Randy, and they'll give you a $50 gift card in their gear shop. But today we're going to talk about what I think is the most complicated western state to apply in if you are a non-resident. For us residents, which I am a resident of Montana, it's a whole lot easier. But you non-residents, Montana wrote the book on how do we lay the leather to them financially and how do we make it so complicated that you almost have to hire a consultant to walk you through the process. Hopefully when I'm done, I've removed the need for a consultant, but I can't help subsidize the fees that you're going to pay if you go this route. In this video, we're going to talk about deer and elk, and the deadline is April 1st, 2021. And you'll, the good part about Montana is you get a quick turnaround. Usually by April 15th, we have the results. But later on, we'll talk about moose and goat and sheep and bison and pronghorn. This video, because it's a separate draw and is even more complicated than the others, uh, is just going to focus on these two, elk and deer. So, like I said, the deadline is April 1st. Don't miss that. But if you do miss it somehow, you can buy a point July through September. So they give you a little mulligan when it's all said and done. So I'm gonna quickly try to explain the framework of the Montana system and then we'll get into costs and all this other stuff. Montana says that we're gonna make a non-resident acquire either an elk deer general tag, which is an elk deer tag together, an elk only tag or a deer only tag. And I'll go through what the costs and how all that works. But those are gen those three options give you a general tag for either elk or deer, or the combo gives you both. And in order to apply then for the limited entry hunts with all of us residents, you have to clear this first hurdle. So in order to say, draw one of the premier elk tags we have in Montana, the, the ones that are really hard to draw. Your first step is you gotta acquire this general tag. And that's what we're gonna talk about in the first part, and then we'll get into, once you clear that first hurdle, how does the limited entry portion of it work? One of the good parts about Montana is if you draw your general deer or general elk tag, you get to hunt the majority of the state. And you get to hunt way more times, way more days than in most other states. So in Montana, we open our archery season the first Saturday in September, and it runs for six weeks. So you get to do that on your general tag, and then they close it for five days. And then season opens five days later, for five weeks of rifle hunting, always closing the Sunday after Thanksgiving. So not that every non-resident can come here for 11 weeks, but you think about how much opportunity that gives you in your calendar, depending on if you're an archery hunter, rifle hunter, maybe a little of both. And these same general season dates apply for both deer and for elk. Those of you who are non-residents, we by statute, have to give away 17,000 deer elk combo tags and another 4,600, I believe it is, deer only tags. Now, some people only apply for the elk part, and if they do, they call it decoupling. That the, the deer portion that would have went with the deer elk combo gets moved over into the deer draw. So it results in more than 4,600 deer tags being issued to non-residents. So you decide, do I want the elk and deer combination tag, or do I want an elk only tag, or do I want a deer only tag? And we'll throw the draw odds up here, but 
As a general rule, if you have two points or more, you got a 100% chance on any of those. Now, when you, <laughs> this is when it's gonna get so complicated. Now, Montana takes 75% of the tags on the point system and 25% are random. So even if you don't have two points, you can draw on the random part. And then, as I'll explain in a minute, a lot of non-residents return their tags and those get reallocated. So if you look at the total draw percentages across all point totals in Montana, last year I think it was 72 to 73 percent for all three of these tag types, whether it's the elk deer combo, the elk only, or the deer only. And the reason that is, is yeah, it's 100% for the people with two or more points, but with return tags and the 25% random pool and all that, across the board, it's 72 to 73%. So three out of four years, hopefully you'll draw. Now, we know that the trend across all Western states has been getting higher and higher and higher demand. And people used to call me and say, Randy, is it worth paying the $50 fee for a preference point for this general draw? And I used to say, nah, you, you got 100% draw. Don't, don't pay them the 50 bucks. Well, now I'd say for the last three years, it's gotten to be more popular and more popular. So if you have the budget and you want to make sure that, okay, next year I know I'm going to draw, maybe you pay your $50 fee. So... That, that's kind of the framework of how that general tag system works. Here's the fees involved. So every number I'm going to give you comes with a $1.25 application fee, transaction, whatever. I don't know where it goes, but I think it goes to the vendor who maintains the website. And then also a 2.5% transaction fee. And so you got to pay all these fees up front, the, the whole tag fee, plus the dollar and 25 cents, plus the two and a half percent. So if you're applying for the deer elk comp tag that you get both of those as part of it, the price this year is $1,089.50. If you say, I'm not going to deer hunt, I only want the elk only portion, they knock that down $164 and you pay $925.50. If you want the deer only, it's $651.50 this year. So you take those numbers and then you add to it the, the transaction fees that I, that I talked about. So when you go into the draw, you get to check a box that says, if I am successful in acquiring this general tag, Here's the unit I want to apply for in the limited entry draw. So you clear the first hurdle. Now you're standing there with all of us residents. Okay, you've got your general tag. Now you can jump into the limited entry draw for tags like you know, some popular units. These are no secret. The Elkhorns, the Missouri Break, Southeast Montana, uh, the Buffer Zone down by Yellowstone Park, whatever. A any of those. The Bears Paw. Uh, those would be limited entry opportunities that you now can apply for. So there, when you check that box, you then say, this is the unit I wanna apply for in the limited entry draw. Well, the limited entry draw is a whole nother complicated mess that goes on bonus points that get squared. Yeah, you're saying, what? You got preference points for my general tag and bonus points for my limited entry tag? Yes, that's what I'm saying. And a few years ago, they decided we should square those bonus points. <laughs> like, yeah. Now, let's say you don't clear the hurdle. You, you say, oh man, I, I, I didn't draw. You can also check the box that says, let me buy a bonus point for the limited entry tags. Or you can do that in July, August, and September if you need to. Uh, then, there, here's the other thing that Montana gives you the option with. And by now, if I haven't lost you, you are, you, you are really dialed in. Or either that or I'm doing a better job than I think of explaining this. So let's say you clear the first hurdle and you said, 
if I clear this hurdle, I want this cool archery tag, uh, you know, let's say the Missouri River breaks. It's hard for you non-residents to draw that one. Uh, but you don't draw. You can check the box that says, then refund my fees for my general tag. Now, I want to give my general tag back, and I think you get 80% of your money back. So when those general tags get thrown back into the draw, they then drop down and get uh, reallocated to people who didn't draw the general tag in this first pass. Confused? You should be, if you're not. Uh, so, you really have three options when, when you go into the draw for the general tags. Okay, all I want is a general tag. You're not even worried about the limited entry tags. You say, all right, if I clear the first hurdle and I get my general tag, I want to apply for the limited entry tags and keep my general tag. And then the last option is I cleared the hurdle. I want to be in the draw for the limited entry tags. If I don't draw, I want to give you back my general tag and give me back the percentage of my money. It's a pretty expensive application, right? <laughs> Just to be in a limited entry draw, you, you say, all right, I, wanna, I want to forfeit 20% of my general tag fee plus the transaction fee plus the bonus point fee plus all this other stuff. Wow. That's, that's really the gist of how it works to get into the limited entry pool. Now you're, you cleared the first hurdle and you're in the limited entry pool and you've been buying bonus points all along. So in the limited entry tags, you as non-residents can get up to 10% of those tags. Up to 10%. That doesn't mean you're guaranteed 10%. It means you might only get 3% or 5%, but you might get all 10%. So you find out about those at the same time you find out about your general tag and everything else. But because we square bonus points, and a lot of you as non-residents either haven't cleared the, the general tag hurdle enough or it just is more complicated and more cost and you're not always keeping up with the point totals, you start squaring points and it really hurts those people without many points. And it really slants the table towards those with a lot of points. So that's how the limited entry draws work. It's a bonus point system where your points are squared and all of you are capped at 10%. Once that 10% cap is met as they're going through the, the draw, anyone else who's been applying there, out, out. So. I wish it was, <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry to be apologizing so much, but I, I really wish it was easier. I, I wish it was different. Uh, Hunter Ed, uh, if you're born after January 1st, 1985, uh, you have to take uh, a Hunter Ed class. Most of you, when you get this tag, you're gonna also have a fishing license and an upland bird license. And it, it includes a bunch of other things that you can do while you're while you're here. So here's a couple things to think about. In the past, you've been able to withdraw your application and there's times you've been able to go in and amend some of these applications. This year, well, once you say purchase, you're locked in. There's no change in anything. There's no withdrawal, you're in. And if you draw, yeah, maybe you can turn it back and get your 80%, but uh, some of that is changing from last year. Also, a lot of you do party applications and the maximum on a party in Montana is five. And know that we only look at the first choice before we go on to the next person. So as a non-resident on the limited entry draws, adding a second or third choice, usually is going to be of no value to you because those tags are all going to be gone before they ever get to anyone's second or third choices. Some of you like to hunt with uh, distance restricted or range, short range weapons, uh, archery muzzleloader. Know that if you come here to archery hunt, you either have to have a certified bow hunter education class 
and proof of it. Or you have to have proof with you when you go to buy your archery stamp of having bought an archery license in another state. Every year some people show up here to archery hunt and they don't have either of that and it's bad news for them. One other thing for those of you who hunt with muzzleloaders is Montana does not have a muzzleloader only season. We have some areas that are short range weapons which are handgun, archery, shotgun, and muzzleloader but it's not, not like we have a special season for muzzleloaders. So muzzleloaders get to hunt right in the field the whole time along with the rifle hunters. So just be thinking about that if you've got some interest in, in these shorter range weapons. Uh, our archery seasons are really popular for elk for the reasons I mentioned. If you're an archery deer hunter and you come out here in September, you're not going to find a lot of competition. Everyone's chasing elk. So those are some other things to think about. But there's some good news about Montana. And it would be this, a couple things. If you are an archery elk hunter, I would say that the Montana general elk tag is as good as you're going to get for the few number of points and the price that you pay. It is that good. And here's why. In Montana, the core of our elk country is mostly in the western half of the state. There's some good elk hunting in other parts of the state, but in the western half of the state, the high country up here is where the elk are in September. And it's mostly public land. As quick as weather comes, as quick as hunting pressure comes, those elk start moving lower and they get onto private land. And access is hard to come by. So I would say if you are an archery elk hunter, Montana is more appealing to you than if you are a rifle hunter. Now I'd say it's almost the opposite for deer because we hunt deer with a rifle in the middle of the rut. It has a negative impact on our age class. Don't come to Montana if you want to look for a 170 inch buck. You might find one but they're, they're almost like unicorns. Because we're hunting, especially mule deer. If you've ever hunted mule deer, November 12th, they are pretty compromised in their thinking. And so we're cropping off the age class before they can get very old. The, the age class that we do have in Montana is strictly a function of the limited entry units where we're restricting harvest or just because there's a lot of private land that protects that age class. Now whitetails, you know, we got a lot of whitetails in Montana and they're a little more sneaky in the rut, but they're still, right, <laughs> they still have their weak point. And if you can rifle hunt them in the rut, uh, that makes for a pretty darn good hunt. So if you're an archery hunter, our elk hunting is better. If you're a rifle hunter, our deer hunting is a lot better. One third of Montana is public land, mostly in the western half of the state. Uh, we have a program called the Block Management System that it's paid a portion of both resident and non-resident licenses fund part of that, but you as non-residents are funding the majority of it. Uh, each year that amount of acreage is somewhere plus or minus 7 million acres of public land or private land that becomes accessible. They get paid for the impacts of allowing hunting. And in that process, there's two types of, of properties. There's type one and type two. One of them is just come and park, sign into a box and off you go. Another one of those versions is you gotta call and make a reservation. And those ones that require reservations get booked up way, way in advance. So uh, there are a lot of places to go and expect I mean, Montanans love to hunt. So if you come here and hunt, don't think that you're going to be the only person in the woods. There's a lot of hunting pressure in Montana on our public lands. But there's also some really, really good hunting for those who work at it. They're persistent. And they put in their time. And uh, the real important part is make sure you don't miss the deadline by April 1st. No, this isn't an April Fool's joke. You don't apply, they don't look you up in the phone book and say, hey, we got a tag for you. So don't miss the deadline. Decide if it's worth your time to buy the deer tag, the elk tag, or the deer elk that is combined. 
Uh, some people say for the extra 160 whatever dollars, yeah, I'll add a deer tag onto my elk tag. Um, if you go to other states and were to buy a deer and an elk tag combined, plus most other states have an upfront hunting license, uh, the combination price in Montana is usually cheaper than other states. So there you have it, folks. That's my best effort to make a really complicated system somewhat easier to understand. But if I was you, if I'm interested in Montana, I'm going out to go hunt their strategy articles and all their charts, all their graphics, everything they have will give you way more information than what I just provided here. So if you go out there and sign up for the Insider, use promo code Randy and they'll give you a $50 gift card in their gear shop. Don't miss the deadline of April 1st. Good luck.